Google Camera or Gcam for short is a camera application developed by Google for Android. It's the default camera app on Google Pixel smartphones which are accepted by many to be some of, if not the best phones to take photos with. So how in the world do you get something like this on your Android device that was made by, for example, nothing? Well, to get it onto your phone, you have to find a working model of Gcam that was adapted by a programmer for that specific device. It comes in the form of an APK file, which stands for Android Package Kit. These files are pretty much the same as the files on the apps on the Google Play Store, but obviously, these Gcam iterations aren't official, so you won't be finding them there. The result is, your phone camera turns into a camera of a Pixel phone. I am exaggerating a little bit though, the quality won't be the exact same. The Gcam in a Pixel is optimized perfectly with the sensors and the chipset, while programmers have to do the best they can to make it work the same way on other devices. The Nothing Phone 1 is a very new device with currently a mediocre camera at best. We were able to find a suitable Gcam for it and decided to make a comparison between its own camera app and the Gcam. We'll also show you a photo taken by the Pixel 6 Pro a couple of times for you to better understand the difference between a Gcam and the original one optimized for a Pixel phone. It definitely makes me happy that we're able to give you a perfect photo right as we get into this comparison. These photos were taken by the same phone, but they look completely different and the quality difference is insane to me. The photo taken with the Gcam looks very similar to a Pixel 6 photo as the color accuracy is on point with everything looking so natural. The one on the left just can't compare, regardless of what aspect you want to look at. As I promised, I'll give you a photo taken by the Pixel 6 Pro so you can see just how well the Gcam on the Nothing Phone 1 is able to emulate the performance. If you didn't know that you could do this, I'm guessing you're getting pretty excited right about now, so let's check out a photo in a different setting, Nature. There's no doubt that the color of the flower is better represented on the right, and if you crop in the photo right here, you'll also be able to see the ability of the Gcam with regard to catching those fine details. That'll be 2 out of 2 so far where Google's camera software prevails can we make it three though? You bet we can. Just look at the difference in quality. It's crazy how you can buy a mid-range phone that doesn't have the best camera and transform it into a near-perfect Google Pixel. I think you get the general idea of how this thing works and how it helps you take way better photos so we can speed things up a bit and pass through the other photos while you're listening to me in the background as we're gonna arrive at the ultra-wide camera. There is an issue here with the white balance which makes the photos look a little pink, but why? The reason is, every camera has a different sensor. This is one of the biggest struggles with porting a Gcam to a different phone because the software has to be optimized separately for each sensor so that each camera will work like how they're supposed to. Since this is a new phone, there can be some issues with how Gcam works on cameras that aren't as paid attention to as the main camera. So, here are the portrait photos. This was actually interesting because the photos from the Gcam look nothing like portrait photos taken by the Pixel. The nothing Phone One's portrait mode is actually decent for a mid-range and the edge detection is actually quite impressive. Here's the photo taken by the Pixel 6 Pro. I'm not going to say whether it's better or not, I'm just going to leave it up to you to write in the comments which one you like more. There's definitely a big difference and maybe this is because like I mentioned that the Gcam hasn't been optimized fully for the Nothing Phone 1 just yet. The comparison of the second portrait photo has a lot of traits that are similar to the first one and all I know is that they look nothing like each other which obviously does help this video become a lot more interesting. Even the attributes of the zoom photos are different when using the Gcam but not really in a good way. I wouldn't say that it's in a bad way either, just that without an optical zoom lens, you're not really going to get the best quality either way. I was thinking that maybe we would see Google's Super Res Zoom kick in, which does help out digital zoom photos a lot, but that's obviously not what happened as you can see from the footage. I did like the photos from the selfie camera a lot though, as it's really nice to see that there was more than just a rear camera affected by the quality increase. Will we see these kinds of differences for videos? It looks like there were some nice optimizations here as the footage from the Gcam is looking brighter, sharper and a lot more pleasing to watch. The same surely goes for the second video as well, it's not perfect by any means so don't get me wrong, but I personally prefer the videos on the right. We're gonna round out the videos with some ultra wide footage and if we ignore the shaking which will be solved later with software updates for nothing as well as optimizations for the Gcam, I'd say once again the right side takes the point as the video is sharp, clear and concise. 
Finishing up this video with a big laugh will be stabilization. I wasn't sure if this would work or not, but it seems like it doesn't. At least it'll be entertaining to you, as it looks like the phone is just gonna fly out of my hands. So guys, what do you think of this comparison? Did you know about Gcam? Have you used one for your own phone before? What were your results and were you happy with them? Leave a comment so we can also learn from your experiences while liking this video and hitting that subscribe button to keep in touch. See you soon.